And welcome back to AgriTalk. We are in Indianapolis, Indiana for the International Fuel Ethanol Workshop and Expo. And again, uh, this very much a uh, meeting place for industry leaders from not only this country, but around the world. And we're very happy to talk with one of those ethanol industry leaders, Tom Bias, CEO of Growth Energy. Busy times, my friend. They are busy times, Mike. Great to be on. Good to be with you again. Let's talk about, well, I, don't, I hardly know where to start. I mean, uh, we're in one of those cycles again now where it has become in vogue again to take shots at ethanol and go after ethanol. I mean, we've been down this road before, but here they go. Here we go again. Yeah, and it's not surprising, Mike. You know, there's a lot of vested interests out there that don't want to see our industry succeed. We're 10% of the U.S. fuel consumption, and we know we can get become even a greater percentage. And any time you do that, you're disrupting other people's business models. They're going to fight back. Uh, we, we certainly understand that. I think this industry caught everyone by surprise. They never thought we'd get to 10% so quick. And now it's they're having this oh my moment that, well, we got to stop them because they can go even further, and we will. Now we're on this whole issue of, you know, Congress looking at trying to pull supports away from ethanol. It's, it's amazing to me and frustrating that the industry, ethanol industry's willingness to be flexible on this and to take the money from support and, and A, put money towards deficit reduction, and B, transition to more infrastructure development and things like that, for some, that gets no traction, no credit at all given to an industry that's willing to take cuts and put it towards deficit reduction and move on. Yeah, we may be the only industry in America that's actually gone to Congress with a plan that said we can do more with less and we can still move this industry forward and help America reduce our dependence on foreign oil. I think it is getting traction. I think uh, a lot of people read a lot more into those votes over the last couple of weeks than actually uh, they should. You know, uh, a lot of those votes were symbolic. They were wrapped up in this bigger, broader uh, debate over how do you get the federal deficit under control? Uh, do you do it with tax cuts? Do you do it with a spending reduction? Uh, but I, I think everyone in Congress certainly understands. We still have a few uh, uh, members that don't quite get it. Uh, but, uh, again, we all knew this legislation was going nowhere. It was unconstitutional um, if it had to pass the Senate, but it didn't even pass the Senate. Now we roll up our sleeves. We find a legislative vehicle. We work with the administration, the House, and the Senate and do the right public policy, which is what we all, that's our goal. I think what some people in agriculture don't realize, too, they say, well, they're going after ethanol. Really, farm support, ag support in general, really under the microscope now and a uh, target on their back. So I think people not, need to take a little broader look at this. Yeah, I, I tell people all the time, Mike, we may have been first that they went after, but we're not the last. And it's going to occur. And, you know, I think the debate will get around to uh, equity within the energy tax uh, issues. You know, all right, if the ethanol industry, if we're going to reform them, what about oil and gas? What about coal? What about nuclear? What about all these other energy sources? And um, again, you know, to get the deficit under control, I think they're going to have to look at all that. Uh, uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to keep plugging. Uh, uh, everyone say a prayer that we can get Congress to pass uh, something that gets signed into law. Um, and uh, I think we'll see significant progress being made. Now, we look at uh, some things that have happened, and this is an international conference we're at now, but the G20 ag ministers recently said, hey, no real evidence of linking biofuel production with uh, food price volatility. Oh, Mike, because you and I have talked several times. Uh, it may be the biggest lie I've ever heard in Washington, and there's been some whoppers told out there over the last 25 years that I've been there. Uh, it, this whole food versus fuel thing, you know, uh, again, uh, the feedstocks that we currently use, that's not what people eat on a daily basis unless they got some good grinding teeth. You know, this is not canned corn, sweet corn, popcorn, or even candy corn. This is animal feed, and, and our byproduct, as you know, the only thing we remove is the starch. You end up with all the protein, all the oil, all the fiber back in a, in a high-value animal feed. So uh, intellectual people actually understand that, uh, but we're in, we're in a fight. We're in a fight over perception. And food versus fuel is an easy charge to make. It takes us several minutes to explain why it's not true. But that's why we're partnering with NASCAR and others, get that message out there, 
uh, talk about the benefits of American ethanol, the jobs, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, better, cheaper for consumers, revitalize our rural economies, and finally, finally, after 40 years, do something to reduce our dependency on foreign oil. That's right, because so many of the proposals that are out there would keep us going down the same path of dependency and, and not correct the mistakes we've made in the past. And this is a chance to, to uh, head in the right direction and get to off that, uh, you know, that, that trough that we have to keep going back to the way we're set up now to depend on these other countries, many of them which aren't friendly to us, uh, depending on them for our energy. All right, we're talking with Tom Bias, CEO of Growth Energy. He mentioned NASCAR. I want to come back and talk about that. It's been a great connection, a partnership promoting ethanol, and there are some great uh, promotions going on out there. We'll talk about them next. Stay with us from the Fuel Ethanol and all workshop and expo in Indianapolis. This is AgriTalk. Welcome back to AgriTalk. We are in Indianapolis at the Fuel Ethanol Workshop talking with Tom Bias, CEO of Growth Energy. All right, Tom, great partnership with NASCAR. You've got a lot of good promotions going on. Yeah, we're really excited about the partnership with NASCAR, Mike, because, you know, they, they have a lot of loyal followers. Uh, about 100 million people follow NASCAR. And it's such a great message for us because it's racing. They need fuel. Ethanol is a high-performance fuel. What they've found uh, overwhelmingly, if you talk to the people in the garages and the mechanics and the engine engineers, is they got higher horsepower, better performance. They're not, they, the mileage uh, issue is uh, pretty much a non-factor. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have been fed this uh, misinformation that think, oh, my gosh, this is bad for my car. We all know it's not. And, you know, when we say it, uh, people often say, well, you're, you're, you've got a vested interest. But when NASCAR says it, people listen. Yeah, when cars are your livelihood and you endorse a fuel like E15, that says them. Well, when you got to, you know, the probably the most American sport uh, that you could think of, NASCAR, and as you say, they have to perform. Uh, choosing ethanol, we think it's a great deal and it's a great partnership. We're just in the beginning of it. They're about a third of the uh, way through the first season. They've had no problems. I was just on a program with Brian France here this morning and, and he repeated it again. It's, the transition's been seamless. Uh, the, the teams like it, everyone likes it, and so hopefully uh, we can help change people's hearts, minds, and souls about ethanol. And there's so much you can tie in with this besides the race itself, the pre-race activities and bring in producers and let them talk with the, the fans at the races. I mean, what an educational tool that is. It is an educational tool. And, and you know, just at the race, and we had a big, a big event in Kansas City, and the thousands of people that come through those our booth and get educated about ethanol. And a lot of people, when, they, when you explain the facts to them, and you know this, Mike, they say, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, it's incumbent on us to explain that to them. As an industry, we can't just sit back and hope people understand that. We have to be aggressive. Um, and the partnership with NASCAR, we think, is, is probably the biggest effort that we've ever seen uh, on this industry to get our message out there. I know you at Growth Energy, you've been very aggressive in, in reaching out, getting the message out to people. It's important. You can't let your critics define you, or they define you based on misinformation. Food versus fuel, international indirect land use. We've seen all this. Uh, I still get hit uh, by people all the time and saying, well, you, you use more energy to produce ethanol than, than you end up with, which is uh, hogwash. You know, uh, in fact, we're, we return 2.3 uh, units of energy for each in, uh, unit used. Uh, compare that to gasoline, which at best is one to one. I saw that very thing brought up in a major newspaper in this country, another article quoting that same old tired myth that's so inaccurate. It's amazing the people that are against ethanol, they will not let facts get in the way of their opinion. <laughs> they don't. You know, in Washington, 90% uh, of any battle is perception. And uh, yeah, they listen to their, their constituents. And what we have to do a better job as an industry is getting our message out there. And, and, it, and it takes resources because the vested interests that don't want to see us succeed, they have pretty deep pockets. <laughs> so uh, this is a good kind of a rallying point to get everyone caught up on some of the issues and kind of get ready to move forward from here. It is. And, and, and you know, we're going to win this fight. 
uh, just as, as you mentioned, we've been through these struggles before. Uh, we just have to keep our, our nose to the grindstone and keep moving forward. Very good. Good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you, Mike. Right. Thanks. Tom Bias, CEO of Growth Energy, as we broadcast here from the Fuel Ethanol Workshop and Expo in Indianapolis. Our broadcast brought to you by Eisenman Clean Air and Energy Technology. We're at their booth, and again, a lot of uh, technology that they have available for the ethanol industry, including anaerobic digestion for ethanol. Coming up next, we've talked a lot now about NASCAR. We're going to talk with their managing director for Green Innovation and talk about this transition to EV. 15 and how the NASCAR uh, uh, circuit uh, feels about using ethanol. That's coming up next, and we'll talk more about the technology on display here as well. So stay with us from Indianapolis. It's halftime on AgriTalk. <laughs> 